from him. But since then, I did stumble across Cat Williams performing this joke on Comic View. Now, I want you guys to be the judges. Let me know if you think Seth stole this joke from Cat. Now, you should have had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. Because I'm going to tell you And now, once again, here goes Cedric the Entertainer doing his joke from Kings of Comedy. They gonna move to the moon. Ain't gonna happen. Y'all move to the moon, damn it, we coming to the moon. Oh, we be right behind y'all in space shuttles with Cadillac grills, niggas. Niggas just rolling one headlight out. Tags be all wrong. All base. Y'all know we'll drive a space shuttle too. That's right up our damn alley. A space shuttle is long. They ain't scared of no black folk. We'll drive a space shuttle. We grew up driving long for cars. We'll drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter. We, 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 we get us a cigarette. We get us, we be in a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce. We get us. Okay, so both of them was in the car. That's the premise of the joke. Music being too loud, you gotta turn it down. It may be something to that, or it may be just too vague to say that he stole the joke, which y'all think. But like I told y'all, let me catch y'all up with what led to this point with these clips being resurfaced. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up? He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke mm -hmm. and it's my last joke and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998 I'm doing this joke, it's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times, <laughs> and Cat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon. I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> There was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? Cedric sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here looking like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie star. What? 
What? It's a situation. We never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix. What up, y'all? What's up? I want to address this Cat Williams thing one time, man. I saw people on there really uh, commenting about that. Look. I have no idea what this brother is talking about. That joke is over 30 years old, close to 30 something years old. I did the Kings of Comedy in 1999. Probably have been doing that joke six, seven years before that. I don't even know if Cat was doing comedy then. So, you know, again, he a talented brother. I have no idea what he's talking about. I've never seen Cat do a, a space show joke. So, uh, you know, there may be something that he believes is true. I've, I've written a lot of jokes. I've had a lot of comedians steal my jokes as well. So I understand if you feel, you know, slighted by that, but that's my joke. That's my joke, dog. Grab a space shuttle to the moon, cigarette, cutie pie, rocking in the background, parallel parking the space shuttle. It's my joke. I, my goal was to get this far in Hollywood and still have a virgin asshole. <laughs> and I never had sucked a penis. That was my only goal. I didn't want to get with a white woman because I was scared she might have me running down the street like Jonathan Then you go see, come on, cat. Not because I didn't like white women. I think white women are as great as any other women. But I'm not gonna act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. You could be Kang the Conqueror and they could take your rabbit ass down in two weekends. And that's the truth of the matter. So I stayed away from that. And remember, I told you the drug story from when I'm in the park. Yeah. So these are just the things. I had all of those when I came in. I already was ready for that. That's what they don't like. Hey, it's your brother Van Silk. Another episode of Not At My House. Creativity, hope, unity, resilience. I, t t I took a break because I had to watch the Cat Williams interview three times with Shannon Sharp. I count the numbers from yesterday to the day on YouTube. In total, they had about 11 million views. Definitely broke the internet. Shannon Sharp is happy. But see, a lot of people in the industry don't understand. If you're not in this industry, you will not understand a lot of things that go on. For years, they've been gatekeepers, people stopping real entertaining people from achieving things in this business. A lot of this stuff happened to break down with Harvey Weinstein, then, you know, a month ago with Puffy. Ain't no so funny. Ain't nobody coming to their aids. And you see, this is 2024. It's the fall of Babylon the Great. Yeah, a lot of talented people out here in this industry that was denied advancing because of the gatekeepers. I'm not going to go into all that. But when you listen to Jaguar Wright, she wasn't lying. But see, the people in this industry, it's, they don't people in the industry is going to go with the flow. When they hit the fan, they quiet. I applaud Cat Williams. The people want to find faults because he didn't sell his soul. It's like Dave Chappelle stepped away trying to put me in a dress. You know how you can notice those who sold their soul? They always doing something. They continuously doing something or they wearing a dress. Or they just doing more than they should be doing, and, and and what they doing don't don't match what the what they they succeed. I'm gonna say this: their materialist stuff don't match what they've done. Cat Williams on his 14th Netflix special. 
and you see he kept it 100. And a lot of y'all don't want to believe things. So I listened to Ricky Smiley this morning and, you know, what can he say? So Michael Blackson jumping there and he didn't even mention your name. Kevin Hart, somebody took an old thing of Kevin Hart when he was on The Breakfast Club with Tiffany Haddish and used that on YouTube because you got stupid people out here. What's Steve Harvey going to say? I mean, was Cat Williams lying when they said you was trying to get Bernie Mac part in Ocean Eleven? Was he lying when he said that the King of Comedy was your show so you was the closing act? But Bernie Mac was funnier than everybody on it. See, in today's world, the people don't want to know the truth. They all live on lies. But I'm going to ask you one thing. Out of all these gatekeepers and people in this business, what have they done for the black community? Nothing. When Taraji Henson's crying about salary, Y'all sitting up here trying to calculate, well, you made $150,000. Okay. Call Uncle Sam. Manager's fee, this fee, that fee. Well, if you do 10 movies, you can't do 10 movies in a year. Like, people in this industry, all you fans need to shut the fuck up. Because you know nothing about this business. And I hate to even cut, but you know nothing. All you TikTokers and all you YouTubers, you know nothing. You have no understanding about this industry and what they have done to many people. It's sad that you got social media because the stupidest people can make comments. Shannon Sharp, I'm proud of you. You stood your ground because for those who sat on your couch, they all tell lies. You can tell when they tell lies because if if Cat Williams was lying, then there's a defamation of character suit that should be coming up. Same thing with Jaguar Wright. Oh, we're going to sue her. Ain't nobody sued Jaguar Wright. Because you know it's it's because she's not lying. And see, all you so-called fanatics, which I call fans in this industry, y'all want to believe these celebrities, man. They got more problems than a regular human being. Okay? When Jada Pinkett aired out Will Smith... I ain't hear none of your women came to his defense. But y'all found some way to defend her and her bullshit. But I'm going to let Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp, y'all check out some of the excerpts. Make sure y'all go to Club Shay Shay. This is Van Silk, not in my house. On Rumble.com, I'm out. <laughs> You stole Friday after next, the one I was in. <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. Three quick points. You mean in Hollywood. Would, they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds. That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I didn't know he... He could. shouldn't be able... You wouldn't let an a, a, a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man, you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was... Sir, no one... Why no... He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he... What? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley 
knows this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy and this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never yeah, funny, right. no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines. I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious. Not now. Then he was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years, he was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Why would you put that in your, put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So That he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. That's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike, because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing.